Yo, what's cracking everyone? Eric Ship Triple One here, back again with another video on Forza Horizon 5. Now, I know for many who watch my videos here on YouTube are really excited about the upcoming release of Horizon 5, and some have even gone to the extent of using my channel to provide updates for everything Horizon 5. It's certainly very humbling to read those comments on my videos, and I just want to say thank you all so very much. So, of course, with the E3 event, along with one stream that Playground Games did. Not surprisingly, many of the information were omitted in those video reveals. As I've said in the past, other forms of media such as interviews being conducted by game journalists allows developers to answer different elements of the game as the journalist can prepare unique and exciting questions in advance rather than going off the cuff. Which, if we want to extract as much information as we can from Playground Games, this would be the best way. So with that said, there has been more things I've discovered about Forza Horizon 5. Now some of you may already know these, especially if you are a hardcore Horizon fan like myself, but for those who are excited but just casually want to know more without reading many articles, well, here are five new features you need to know for Forza Horizon 5. Starting off with number one, Events Lab. So from all of the reveal content, I'm sure most of you have a fair idea on what Events Lab is, at least on the surface. Now Mike Brown, the creative director for Horizon 5, states that Events Lab is a new toolset that allows players to create new races, game modes and gameplay experiences. You can customise everything, even down to the fundamental rules of the game. Now of course when we hear this, we always take every new feature, especially like Events Lab, that's never been featured in a Horizon game before, with a grain of salt. I mean, who remembers the hype about Horizon 4 when they revealed that we can purchase new houses and own businesses? And that didn't turn out as cool as it sounded in the end. However, with Events Lab, it really looks like this feature that was once used internally for developers have now been refined for consumers to have a go. For those who have played Dirt 5's Playground mode can be somewhat seen as a comparison. However, I think Events Lab, in terms of creativity, is more in line with Horizon 3's development build. I remember a few years back when players got their hands on the debugged version of Horizon 3. Crazy videos were made with cars going at 6,000 miles per hour flying up into space. Now I'm unsure where the limit is with Events Lab, but if it's close to anything we've seen in Super 7 from Horizon 4, I think there would be a lot of creative freedom. And also, Mike Brown stated that yes, you can make cars feel much heavier or reduce gravity. I guess when they said right down to the fundamentals of the game, Playground Games weren't joking. Number 2. Expedition Mode So, Expedition Mode is a new game mode that's integrated with the campaign of Horizon 5, and as you progress through the game, you'll get an opportunity to participate in these expeditions to explore new parts of the map. I would say this is an evolution from what we have been getting with past Horizon games with the beauty spots, but rather than just stumbling across them during the free roam, it's led by a tour guide in the game known as Rami. As Horizon 5 will be the biggest game in its series, with plenty of new technology being demonstrated, this mode is used to allow players to experience Horizon 5 in a guided manner that will get us to experience not just the beauty spots, but also different local weather effects, where Rami will at one point lead us to driving directly into. This is an awesome feature. I've said in Horizon 4 that there's been a lack of direction, which leads players who don't necessarily play games that often miss a lot of things. Not only that, remember in the Fortune Island expansion prologue where lightning strikes down a tree while you're driving towards the festival? What happened to that effect once we got into free roam? It seemed to have gone missing. Well, in Horizon 5, although I don't think lightning striking a tree will be a feature, just know that during these expeditions, whatever Playground games will be showcasing or highlighting, once experienced in this mode, they will continue to occur in-game. So things like the active volcano are not just expedition mode features. 
On top of that, after you've completed each expedition, that is how you unlock a new festival site, which will then unlock new races. It looks like Playground Games are going back to their roots again, encouraging the players to truly explore the entire Horizon map. Number 3, Fortsathon Live is gone. One of the biggest complaints that are made about Fortsathon Live was just how empty this feature actually felt. I understand with Horizon 4, they really went all in with the community approach, but the races or objectives that we had to do weren't exciting at all. Concept-wise, yes, it was great to bring people together, accomplish a task, and together earn rewards, but the tasks we were given were just plain to the point that many players felt that we were just doing this purely for the grind and to gain Fortsathon points. However, now, Fortsathon Live has been replaced with Horizon Arcade. At first, when I heard Arcade, I was like, oh my goodness, what stunt is Playground Games pulling now? But this feature works in a much more vibrant manner. First off, instead of the plain game modes we had in Fortsathon Live, there are now 12 different game modes, some we have already seen from E3 with the piñatas, all designed to be fun little mini games with everyone participating. Now what makes Horizon Arcade even more impressive is that the fact that these events happen one after another straight away. So there's no waiting for another hour for each Forza the Live event. Just simply join and once you are finished, you can either dip or continue with some other races. It's a refreshing cycle of games and players for every single event. But my question is, can players join halfway to help with achieving the task? I know some of you might be thinking, well, if that's the case, then every player would wait for the end to join. Well, not exactly. Maybe if their prizes is proportionate to how much they participate, that way it would truly be an endless and seamless cycle for the Horizon Arcade experience. What do you guys think? Number 4, More Player Direction One of Forza Horizon 4's best but yet worst quality was the freedom it allowed players to have. Of course, we all like to do our own things, but if there's not really a sense of direction, it leads to no real satisfaction when achieving something because we don't know if what we did was important or not. And while that has already been slightly addressed with the new expedition mode we explained earlier, other elements such as choosing a vehicle for a race, in Horizon 5, it will suggest to the players what may be the better vehicle you have in your garage to tackle this off off-roading event. I know this feature is more catered for newer players, but I believe it's a testament to where Horizon 5 is heading. And also, for people who don't know, this is Mike Brown's first Horizon game as the creative director. He became the creative director for the Horizon series or Playground games after the launch of Horizon 4. And seeing as how, even till this day, we've been getting updates for Horizon 4 nearly three years later, I believe we are in very good hands for Horizon 5. And lastly, number 5, Sport Mode Discovered. Now, in some of my previous Horizon 5 videos, we speculated about the Eco Mode to Race Mode in the Project 1, mainly based on the E3 trailer. And remember, with these trailers, the developers are using their complete debugged version of the game, which has all the features to create basically anything. So far, we have seen the AMG Project 1 change from Eco Mode to Race Mode and then take off. We have also seen some gameplay of the Mercedes in Race Mode with the spoiler and fins activated. And at the end of the E3 presentation, the spoiler of the Mercedes retract and lifted up again, only to cruise off into the sunset. Set. Now, whenever the car was changing modes, it was seen through a cinematic shot. And if we go back to Horizon 2 with the E3 trailer, you can see the cars opening their doors while driving. Obviously, this feature wasn't featured in the game, but of course was used to showcase Horizon 2. However, some of you discovered something very interesting. In the Events Lab gameplay, we saw the Project 1 zoom past the Ford Bronco at around 70 miles per hour with none of its race features activated. My question is, does the Mercedes have dynamic aero based on speed, despite what was shown in the trailer, or are different modes really a thing? 
honestly, the anticipation for me is really big on this one as this could give many cars on the Horizon 5 car list multiple experiences. So there we have it guys, five new features that you all need to know for Forza Horizon 5. If you guys did find this video helpful, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button as that would really help me out. And also, if you guys would like to see more Forza Horizon 5 updates and possibly early gameplay, make sure to click the subscribe button with notifications turned on. That way you won't ever miss out on another video that goes live. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.